Okay, so I'm now on question 20, 16, question two. You're asked to describe how to test sample A or B for unsaturation. Test for unsaturation, bromine water, red, brown to colourless, or acidified potassium permanganate goes from pink to colourless. B, at room temperature, it was observed de-evaporated more. So based on this observation, you have to deduce the identity of liquid D. And this comes back again to the intermolecular bonding between our different substances. If I look at eugenol, okay, it has an OL, which is the ending that's associated with alcohols. Okay, so because of that, OH here is its functional group. Ethanoic acid, also COOH, so again, they'll have hydrogen bonds present. However, my ethanol is different, okay, C double bond O, so weaker bonds. So that's going to be the one that will evaporate first, the ethanol. Then you're asked to describe a test to confirm D, and we've looked at these already. So add Tollens reagent, which is your silver nitrate, you heat and you end up with a silver deposit or a silver mirror. More easily, add failings, heat, and it goes from blue to brick red precipitate. Okay. Next, then you're told that some water was added. Okay. You're told that a white emulsion forms in C and a colourless solution forms in E. And you're asked to label C and E. So firstly, the emulsion that contains oil droplets and water. So I know ethanoic acid is going to fully dissolve in water. So my C must be my eugenol. Okay, E then must be ethanoic acid. So that's how you identify both of those. And then a small volume of cyclohexane was then added. Um, what was observed, okay, when the test tube of C was allowed to stand. So you'd end up with two layers. You had the organic layer and the aqueous layer. And remember, we've done that already in liquid-liquid extraction or solvent extraction. After that, you're asked to write a balanced equation for magnesium ribbon reacting with E. And E is ethanoic acid, so I have CH3COOH plus Mg. Now, remember, Mg is in group two, okay? CH3COO will only have one valency of minus one. So I need to have two of those, okay? So CH3COO bracket two Mg. And remember, anytime we have an acid and a metal hydrogen given off. So if I balance here, CH3COO, I need two of them. And H2, I need two of them. So that's it balanced. Next, then, you're asked to describe, with the aid of a label diagram, a method used to measure the melting point of benzoic acid. So I have the diagram here. I have a hot plate. This is my aluminium block. I then place in my digital thermometer with my capillary tube. So if you're asked to describe, so place one end of capillary tube in blue flame. That's to close it. Okay, add benzoic acid crystals. And drop in a long tube. Place in aluminium block on hot plate. Heat, note, temperature, it melts that. Okay, and then you should repeat to get an average. Part two, the melting point range of F is lower and broader than that of G, which is the pure G. Okay, the lower, the broader, the more impure it is. So F there will be more impure, G more pure. And then how would we purify it? using or doing recrystallization.